Aaron Ebert. I'm here as the content creator for Dixie Bell, ready to go. I am in Pensacola, Florida, and uh, it's hot. I could probably use about three air conditioners right now. I'm sure it's hot where you are. Why don't you let us know where you're from? And as you pop in, say hi. Tonight, we're going to be working. Uh, for me, I'm going to be continuing to work on this French provincial dresser behind me. I have just about this much planned and we have about that much time so we'll fill it up with with all kinds of goodness so feel free to ask questions again i appreciate you saying hi uh holler at a friend tell them to come watch that's always great if you're not following me on social media uh, do that especially even on youtube that's always great i try to keep those things uh, populated and, and busy uh two things that i want to work on tonight or i want to try tonight and that is the uh what is this one called script de uh, amour francais i don't know if I'm sure if i'm saying that right but it has this nice lovely uh french uh quote and i looked it up just to make sure i knew what it said and uh if, it, if i'm correct it says love is like war easy to start hard to end and impossible to forget so uh i'm going to use this a little bit as a texture element and in, in case i feel like we need to go that direction i also have dixie bell's Harlequin uh, stencil as well. So two different stencils for your project, swap out whatever stencil you want. They've come out with some new ones. So whatever you do with your project, hopefully maybe some of the techniques and how I use the stencil can help you with your project. So irrelevant to really what stencil I'm using, let's focus on technique tonight. That's gonna be my goal. Um, I have already uh, cleaned. In fact, I had to do a good bit of sanding. Uh, cleaned it and then I applied uh, a good coat of boss. Sometimes it's not just a matter of uh, for me that it's a it might be a bleeder or it's got stains or something. Um, I, I like the texture. I like to have that nice consistent base coat. So sometimes it's just a habit for me to do boss. Not always required but to me it's a little bit of a safety net but I also do like have a nice good base of color. So I've already bossed it and I put one coat of French linen. I said in the description something about all things French Provincial. Well, we have a French Provincial dresser. I put French linen. We have a French quote. I mean, we're hitting all the points, right? So uh, we're doing our best tonight. I, um, I usually for my stenciling, and you can do whatever you'd like. You can use a blue sponge. You can use a brush. Um, I kind of liked using my round small brush. Let's see if it'll, there we go. And the reason why I like the round small, it's got a nice blunt flat edge. So it, to me, it gives me a nice uh, flat edge for stenciling. And if you want to, you can always get down to the end. But I like the, the this brush and it's probably the number one reason I use this brush is for stenciling. So that's what I'm going to use. All right. So here's my thought. I'm going to go with more of a random kind of artistic feel on this, meaning I'm not going to put this up here and do the whole quote. I just really want random letters and words to appear on this. You're not gonna really be able to read the quote on this piece when I'm done, like a complete sent, uh, statement, but you're gonna see different things like impossible. So that's kind of what we're doing, random. And then what I think would be nice is if I come up with a different color and do a little bit of the uh, Harlequin uh, qu uh, texture, a little bit on the front, maybe on the side. So again, I want to keep this as ri as random as possible. Mason Dixon Gray does have a little bit of warm tones, but uh, let's see how this looks, okay? I'm gonna put this on the floor as well. And let's try. So we're already dry where I was working earlier, so this is fine. Nothing wrong with having multiple layers of colors. So same technique, trial and error. Let's just see how this works out. I just want to make sure I'm fairly straight. All right, Mason Dixon Gray test. I should have like one of those uh, boards where you go test number one, click, you know, like we're doing some kind of movie scene. Experiment test number three. Like a science lab or something. All right, I think that looks better. I should have followed my gut earlier because I had pulled out Mason Dixon Gray. I just felt like it was, wasn't sure. So I'm liking this, but guess what? Now we have two layers of tone here. 
So we've just added to the complexity of this piece, kind of giving it a little bit of extra depth. And that's, in other words, we have a light reward here and a dark one there. That's all playing to our strength. So very, that's working out pretty good. I am not planning on using the flower part. I just don't think I need that. Totally going with words. So I'm occasionally just dipping into the paint just so. All right. It's working out. It's working, working. Let's put one right there. I don't know how much of this I'll do on the side. And that's okay. Sometimes you just need to take a break and see how it goes. So you see how the random technique kind of gives it more of a, almost like I'm doing a, a random age transfer. Okay, so let's move over here. So far so good. I put my link to, if you would like to check out this transfer or the stencil. So pretty simple, right? You can tape it off, but so far it's working pretty good. I am getting kind of messy fingers because I'm holding this stencil as wet paint in my, but that's okay. We kind of just get that process done. This is really giving it the, the mood and the style that I really was hoping to get. If you get an erased paint, like I can still see some of the rays from earlier, you can always do a light sanding, which will actually still give this piece uh, more character. Nothing wrong with that at all. All right, so we're going to move to the bottom. I need to get my handy dandy drawer opener. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you if you wanted to, or if I, I might still do it, you can always even come back over this and tone it down with another color of French linen or some of the colors I mentioned earlier in the live to continue the texture plan. You see how I'm just swirling that around? So after I get this one done, we're going to switch to the Harlequin. I think that's going to be helpful, but I, I do think that I'm going to lean towards a lighter tone. This Mason Dixon gray is planning that turning out to be a perfect choice. Oh, so I got a little wiggly there. Good. Okay. So that's the basics of that process of what I would consider almost a faded stencil. That's not an official technique, but it sounds good, right? I'm gonna put that to the side because I wanna get now, this is the uh, Harlequin texture. Now we're going to switch it up a little bit and I'm going to move you guys back a little bit so you can Kind of get a little bit better view of the whole look. Random texture aged sandbar looks like it might be a good try. So that's what I'm going to pull out next. So what I want to do here is probably where we have a little bit of some void. I'll put just a faint uh, bit of this on there. All right. So just so we're on the same page, I've just switched to sandbar. Okay. Same idea, feel free to tape it off if you want. Just get a little bit of paint and put as much as you want. I'm gonna wipe a little bit off. Now this one, I think I'm gonna do kind of a soft crosshatch, just almost like a, 
where I'm not dabbing, I'm not swirling. Very faint, let's see how that looks. Okay, so I'm looking for just, just a faint bit of that. Pull this back. I wanna add a little bit more. Usually on these kind of projects, I don't normally uh, do something on the top, but we'll see how it goes. Once you're this far into the project, you've almost committed yourself to that you, you, you know, you'd hate to go back and have to repaint something because you don't like how it looks. And just go to the place where you like it. And that's why I'm kind of crisscrossing this just to give me a little bit of a, a fade of the stencil. And I think it'll look feel a little bit more worn. And notice I'm also going over the quote. It's gonna dry darker. This can, you can do this with metallics if you wanted to, but I, I think the metallics are going to, what I would say, class it up a little too much. And I want to keep this thing a little bit more cottage co uh, worn. So let's put some right here. This dresser is a Dixie brand dresser, but it's a lower quality Dixie brand and it's seen its day. So I'm giving it a little bit of uh, style so that, because I don't necessarily recommend that someone uses it for an everyday dresser, but I think it'd make a gorgeous display piece or one that would, um, someone would put maybe in a foyer or on their console table or just in a guest room. Anytime you have a really worn piece, you hate for the next person to kind of, I'm not gonna over advertise it as a quality piece. So just find, I am doing the swirling still. It seems to be working still. Got a little bit out of lines there, but that's okay. I'll come back through and touch that up. I can always take some uh, French linen and do any touch up or do any sanding. So I'm just working my way down randomly. So I did top, court, top and right. So on this one, why don't we play around with the idea of doing the middle. You could also use Dixie Bell's silk screens and do florals and other patterns. Those are totally cool too. I do find that the stencils are really easy to be a little bit more random with. It is a good idea to kind of keep going with the technique while you're in the groove, just because you might, like if I wash this brush and come back in an hour, the brush is gonna be wet and I'll probably lose my rhythm and other things like that. But I did not have a wet brush when I started. I hadn't used these stencils before and I think they're turning out to be really a great look for this piece. It's giving it a unique quality without being, what would we call it, um, super bold. It's just subtle, I like that. Have y'all used these stencils before? Anybody? Curious to know what you used them on. You can find these stencils on the Bells and Whistles line on Dixie Bell's website. Again, I put the link in the description. I'm getting that little drop in the back. That's okay. I'm gonna put one over here. Got a little too, uh, too messy earlier with the stencil and that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hide a little bit of that. Part of the random, right? Nothing on the top. I always forget. 
sometimes I forget you guys are there and I'm like, my head's totally the star of the show. Here we go. go. I will probably come back and do a little bit of a light sanding in some cases, just to also distress that a little bit. going for crisp lines at all so this is doing really well there are times where you probably want that and that's not this piece I'm gonna try and line up the diamonds across so that my diamonds are at least a little bit lined up on the same drawer not really worried it crossed don't put too much paint on your brush don't forget you don't want to gob it up too much one more drawer then we'll have to step back and take a look at it right figure out what it still needs maybe we'll try the side together just to see what I would do over there I like how those are working together. Maybe over here, I don't want to continue that, but I could, I could line up the diamonds. How that would look. Oh, I got some on the bottom of the drill. That's okay. But uh, let's put some, got a little too much paint. Sorry if my stencil is going to start getting in the way of the camera. Tell it to be Dave. Getting my, burning my calories right now. All right, boom. Better than I had planned. We love it when that happens, right? It, it almost looks like I used a metallic, but it's just the way the value. What do y'all think? I did this, so far we've used three colors, right? French linen. Mason Dixon Gray for the dark and Sandbar for the light. We tried Dry Sage, but we'll just, we'll count that as not really a color that we used. I mentioned I wanted to see how this, we would do it on the side. If I do the top, I might do a couple corners. I don't want to do a lot here. Just enough so it doesn't look like I just plastered the front and forgot about the rest of the piece. The nice thing about the side is I have something I can hold the stencil up against. So back into my paint. And on this one, we're just going to, again, swirl, blend, not really blending, fading. As your paint runs out on your brush, just give it a, uh, just kind of fade it out. So I'm just hitting some of the, some of the corners. I've done this, technique before on a couple other pieces, maybe one on the lives a few months back. Uh, if you remember, I did a, an armoire that worked out really well. So just kind of giving it a hint. And then maybe down below, we'll give it just a little bit of one or two. Just start somewhere and go with it. If you want to fade it, now, of course, not. Some people like to have every single part of the stencil fully covered. That's okay, but that's not the look we're going for. If you want to do an aged look? That's kind of a cool way to go. It's kind of cool. So again, I'm starting. It's kind of starting in the middle and work my way out. That way, as the brush gets less. Isn't it cool just to see it, you know, come together? I had no idea two hours ago how this was gonna look, and here we are. So if you think someone would be interested in this look, feel free to share it with them. Or maybe go get you the sten some stencils and get busy trying it on your projects too. 
I may come back later on and do some shading. I'm not sure. Kind of fill that one out a little bit in the next day or so. So probably sometime next week I'll have this done. Don't forget, if you missed my live last night on my Bowtie Treasures page, you can see how I cleaned all the nasty acrylic paint off the hardware. If I get bold and really feel like I want to put some metallics on here, I'm going to probably go with the color of the hardware, which is um, somewhat, I call that bronze, copper. But we'll see. In other words, if I did anything, I'd, I'd probably touch some corners. But that's going to look something like that. We'll bring in one more last time, one last time. So again, that's the look we did with just two stencils and not much paint. So I think that worked out really well. Um, so anyways, I think that's that gives us the uh, overall look. Uh, some things I still need to do is put another coat on the top, decide if I'm going to stencil the top or not. And uh, I think I'm going to leave the hardware just like it is, uh, which is pretty much probably where it was originally. And uh, this thing's looking really cool. I might go back and touch up a couple spots where I felt like it um, just didn't quite work and I might do a light sand just to distress it some more, but I think we're there. All right, don't forget, if you, if you can, follow me on social media, Bowtie Treasures, and uh, go check out YouTube, that'd be awesome. Everyone, thanks for watching tonight. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a content creator for Dixie Bell. Always glad to be here with you. Thanks for watching tonight, and if you're watching replay, let us know. Have a great weekend. Do something awesome. Thank you again, y'all. We'll see you next time. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.